yes, you can hear 27 megahertz SSB CB signals on a cheap kids super regenerative walkie talkie. A few videos ago, I described a beat frequency oscillator to allow AM CB radios to receive SSB activity. That worked provided the CB had an intermediate frequency of 455 kHz. Now, some homebrew receivers might have IFs of other frequencies, or they might be super regenerative types with no IF at all. And that's what this video is all about. A BFO to allow you to hear SSB signals even on a super regenerative receiver. I've built a few Super Regen receivers, and you might see a snippet of one being demonstrated in this video, but I'll mainly demonstrate this BFO unit with kids' walkie-talkies, the type that were produced about 40 or so years ago, often operated on around 27 megahertz, and with a cheap, hissy Super Regen receiver, only received AM. But with this BFO, you'll be able to hear SSB on it. Here's the first one that I made up. It used a variable capacitor, air-spaced variable capacitor. Um, it's just a simple one transistor, four megahertz oscillator. Um, all pretty standard except you do have to play around with some of the component values in order to get your desired frequency range. This one, I initially had the variable capacitor in series with the crystal and I could get quite a big pulling range. Uh, when you multiplied it up, it covered like 27 up to about 28 and a half megahertz. So you could potentially use this as a beat frequency oscillator, not just for a CB radio, but also a 10 metre uh, reception as well. Um, I just changed the components around a little bit. I put the variable capacitor down here from base to earth because that means that one side can be connected to the chassis and that's easier in construction, especially if you're using a metal box or a printed circuit board. And anyway, I should mention that ceramic resonators do vary a little bit. So if you're going to build an oscillator circuit like this, have a receiver so you can listen to its output frequency and vary the component values, especially some of the capacitors. Your ceramic resonator may vary and that will change the frequency that it puts out, especially if you're trying to pull it away from four megahertz. Now, you might be able to see this anyway. There's a few numbers here of various frequencies, like that's 27.3, you need 3.9 megahertz, 28 megahertz translates to four megahertz, a uh, ratio of exactly seven to one. Then if you want to go above 28 megahertz, you need to push it above four megahertz, and you can do that with a low capacitance value in series with the ceramic resonator. If the band is busy, you might be able to tune in several stations. Now, it's a good idea to be able to vary the coupling. Here I've just got a wire that's loose. That's coming from the BFO. Not actually electrically connected, but it's radiating enough. And if signals are strong, then you put the wires near the wire going to the antenna.
nothing behind me. No over-process, no, no distortion. You should just hear my voice. Uh, that's it. But um, yeah, way too much. If, if you're down to 25% on your radio, turn your master control down on your uh, UR6QW. You can vary the frequency. Here's your hand fine tuning. Here is another unit and the circuit is different. It doesn't cover a very big tuning range. It only really covers about 27.3 to 27.4. So roughly channels 30 to 40 on the 27 megahertz system. And here in Australia at least, nearly all the SSB is between those ranges. You know, channel 35 and 38 are the most popular around here. So you don't need to, or at least I didn't need to cover very many of the channels to hear most of the activity. And when you've got a narrow tuning range, then the adjustment is a bit easier. And I'm also presenting this circuit just in case you don't have a variable capacitor. I'm using a potentiometer here and I'm using three diodes in parallel. They are power diodes, one in 4001, and they have a bit of variable capacitance when you adjust the voltage on them. And that pulls the frequency of the ceramic resonator, and you can get various frequency ranges that, when multiplied up, give you uh, coverage of the 27 megahertz range. In this case, 27.3 to 27.4, uh, translates to 3.9 to 3.914 so only a few kilohertz range of coverage now as for the component values don't take too many of them seriously ceramic resonators do vary and you'll probably be needing to change some of these component values if you want to get a wider range in your frequency excursion then reduce the value of this 47 picofarad there um, if your frequency coverage is too high, you're not going low enough, then maybe try increasing the value of this 100 picofarad or this 220 picofarad, um, and vice versa, if you want uh, higher end coverage, including possibly parts of the 10 meter amateur band. There's no SSB signals audible, but to prove that the BFO works, put it near your receiver, apply power, and the receiver will go quiet. As a super regen receiver is very broad, this one is peaked for 27.145, but if signals are strong enough on say 27.3 or even 27.4, uh, that's the higher channels on a CB range, you'll still hear duck talk in this. And if you put the BFO near it, you will be able to hear signals if they're reasonably strong. Not only that, but if there's activity on multiple channels, you'll surprisingly be able to separate those channels. Um, 
if they're using SSB and one of them's not too strong. I've now got a second walkie-talkie and different type Dick Smith Pocket Com and I'll see how that goes. As you might have just heard, I was able to separate stations despite it being a super regen receiver, adding a BFO can actually improve its selectivity. If you're going to use this in conjunction with a standard AMCB just to receive SSB signals, it does help if you have a T connector, preferably a PL259 to two lots of SO239s, but failing that, you can make one up with several adapters. And so we've got the antenna there, radio here, and here we've just got a wire that will pick up signals from the BFO and if you move the BFO nearer the receiver and further away, depending on how strong the signal is, then that will help optimise reception. Little bit of hand capacitance, so it would have been better if I used at least a shielded front panel and use the best capacitors you've got. The disc ceramics that I used in this are not ideal. So that's our look at a RF oscillator that I've been able to receive SSB signals with an AM receiver, even if it's super regen on 27 MHz. Put one together, or failing that, if you've got something like a Nano VNA or some other RF oscillator, you could use that instead. Put that near your old walkie-talkie. It needs to be a super regen one, and let me know what you hear and the results you have.